Hi, I'm Elliot from the Hachisoft Mobile Apps team, and this is a quick start tour of the Pitching Pad app for Android. When the app first opens, you'll see buttons that start a new pitching session, resume a session in progress, estimate pitch speed, and display team statistics. Let's go ahead and start a new session. The app knows we don't have a pitcher yet, and so suggests that we add one. I'll add a new pitcher, my brother Matt. There are other options on the page, but we will leave these with their default values for now. If you want to know more about an option, you can tap the info icon above it. We can now tap Next to finish adding Matt. Now that we have a pitcher, we start a new session. A pitching session is a named log of pitches. It can represent a regular pitching practice, a workout with a pitching pad, or a round of the pitching pad game. To decide the session type, we use the pad mode option. We actually want to play the pitching pad game, so we choose a game session. The difficulty level option should look familiar to pitching pad veterans, and has to do with what on the pad a pitcher is trying to hit. In level 1, the pitcher tries for the traditional strike zone, indicated by the gray border. In level 2, the pitcher aims for one of the four colored blocks. And in level 3, the pitcher targets one of 12 numbers that are arranged like hours on a clock. Let's say that Matt is at level 2. And then keep the rest of the defaults. Once confirmed, the session is added, and we're taken to its summary page. On the screen, we can see the pitching pad, and eventually any logged pitches. It's important to note that this app does not automatically log pitches. Instead, it's a tool to quickly enter pitch data. As such, a standard session will typically involve two people. Matt, our pitcher, will be on the mound and throwing at the pitching pad. I will be the pitch logger, and will be entering each pitch as it is thrown. Although it's possible to have a pitcher log their own pitches, this can interrupt the practice flow. Instead, we recommend that a ch coach, parent, or friend log the pitches of a session and let the pitcher focus on pitching. The green and white instructions give us a hint on how to proceed. Tapping the plus will start the pitch logging, but we can also just tap anywhere on the screen to do the same. The beauty of the pitching pad system is in the way it helps the pitcher zero in on targets. In the game mode, the pitcher first identifies their target and then tries to hit it with a pitch. Our hint text tells us that we need to pick an intended color, and we can see the four color block options. Tapping any one block will select it. When Matt says he wants green, I tap green. Once the intention is locked in, Matt can go ahead and throw his pitch. On this screen, I can log what kind of pitch Matt threw and where it hit. The standard pitch types can be selected via these buttons, curveball, slider, etc. But I can tell that Matt threw a fastball. The detail display shows me all we know about the pitch so far, including the pitch type and target. To indicate where the pitch hit on the pad, I have two options. I can just tap where the pitch hit, or I can touch and drag. As I drag, the pitch details update. This way I can make sure that the app registers a miss as a miss, and a hit as a hit. When I pick up my finger, the location is saved, and we're on to the next step. On this page, we can review everything and make sure we have it right. If everything looks good, we can add the pitch via the check, or just tap anywhere. And now we are back to choosing a color for a new pitch. The green color has a white outline because we chose it last time, and it's now the default that will be selected if we manually move forward. This time Matt threw a curveball but hit the blue block. In a review, I realized that I forgot to update the pitch type to curveball. So I push the back button and fix it. And then 
apply it. With two pitches thrown, our session is finally complete. We push the summary button. We can now see our two pitches. We also see the game scoreboard. The scoreboard is smart, and as you add pitches, it updates according to the rules of the pitching pad game. It shows the current number of balls, strikes, and outs in the inning, as well as the location of any ghost runners. The bottom section displays the total number of walks, strikeouts, and wild pitches so far in the game. The pitcher's score is shown as the total number of runs lost, where fewer is better, and the number of runners allowed on base but then stranded. This is used as a score tiebreaker. And finally, it shows the total pitch count. That concludes our quick tour. Thanks for watching.